get it. It was that windy, to be fair, that, like, if anyone was shouting, you couldn't hear... I don't think you would have heard him know I was behind him. Yeah. But I tried it about five minutes before and he just looked at me and laughed. So I thought, <laughs> I'm not going to try it again, so... I've noticed you tried it in a, in a couple of games uh, since and, and the goalkeeper's been wise to it, hasn't he? Of course he will. I'd say a lot of them I said are wise to it anyway, aren't they? You know, how many people get caught nowadays by that? But I'll keep trying it. Worth trying, though, if it comes up yeah, one, one, two, trying, uh, ten or twenty goes, why not? You might as well. Uh, Yes. Um, now, Alex, important with a, with a small squad and the situation that you're in, that you've got big personalities at the club, and a lot of people are talking about Bio and Leon up front and the great combination there, but they, we, we had them on this show, in fact, a few weeks ago, and they are great personalities, aren't they? That must help. Oh, definitely, the two of them. Um, you listen to them on the bus, and they never, they're never quiet, and um, you can hear them down the front of the bus, and you can hear the stories, and, you know, and they're, they're two great lads, and they keep you know, bubbling over you know, the whole kept the squad together, so good lads, good lads. Yeah. Hopefully just a minor blip there then for Yeovil, but it looks odds on that they're going to be in League One next season, but uh, it's going to be a big step up for them, as you found. Yeah, um, I think there's a you know, big difference between the two leagues. Um, basically, you're playing is a little bit quicker, a little bit stronger, and uh, larger, larger teams um, with a lot more money. Do you think that the gap between the leagues is actually getting bigger? I'm not sure if it's getting bigger. I think it's just that there's definitely a difference, and I think you've got to be able to bring in a bit more experience or a bit more quality into your squad. Um, but I think Yeovil have got some very good players. I think Jevons has been superb this season. Um, and they've got the, the base to um, go on from there. Now, Kevin, what about uh, Chesterfield on, on Saturday? It's a, it's a must-win game, isn't it? Another old cliche. Uh, yeah, it's definitely it's a must-win game, especially coming off the back of two defeats. I say then going away to home the following week, so we know we've got to pick up maximum points this week. Alex, final word from you. Confident that uh, Torquay can survive and stay up and, and really you know, battle for survival? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't think we'd be, we'd be trying as hard as we are at the moment if we didn't think we could do it. I think um, we just need to stick at you know, what we're trying to do, and um, I think the lads believe they can do it. We've definitely got the squad or the players to um, actually stay up. Okay, fingers crossed you can. Thanks for being with us tonight, Alex and uh, Kevin. Well, this was always going to be a tough month for Torquay United. They face the top three sides in League One over the next four games, starting with Saturday's trip to second place home. Not the ideal time then for them to have dropped into the relegation zone, courtesy of that two-all draw with Chesterfield. Martin Deans, the commentator. Russell to his right. Going forward towards Akin Fenwa. And to get the better of Everett, he's got the shot in and... It was turned away rather, in rather an orthodox fashion, really, by Carl Muggleton. Then, first real threat we've seen. Russell back for Woodman. Now McGlinchey inside for Alex Russell. Abbey. Taking a while to find Tony Beddow. Referee saying play on. Torquay have the advantage. Aimed in towards Akin Fenwa. Abby getting it wide for Tony Beddow. A long raking cross which Chesterfield just couldn't deal with. Adibayo Akin Fenwa gets his 11th goal of the season. Torquay in front. Davis forward for Dybala. Now Nicholson. Mark Hudson in a bit of space, looking to pull it back. He's pulled it back behind everyone. Derek Niven coming in with a shot. Oh, what a finish from Derek Niven! Well, that was absolutely unstoppable. Well, it looked for all the world then as if uh, Mark Hudson had pulled the ball too far back. Derek Niven running onto it. And that is his first of the season. And in towards Blatherwick. Hill was back there. Dabola got the shot in. Now Hudson. And to get the long-range effort in, it was only just wide. Talking almost caught out by the long-range effort again. Cross in towards Akin Fenwa. Little knock down. This is Alex Russell. Oh, off the crossbar. Torquay so close to snatching the lead once more. Woodman. Robedo. Oh, he's running into trouble. Hudson with the shot. Oh, turned in. Mark Hudson gets the second goal for Chesterfield. Four minutes into the second half, when it all stemmed from that mistake by Tony Beddo. Tried to do a little too much on the edge of his own area. Gave the ball away. 
And Hudson spotted Marriott off his line. Getting it in off the underside of the crossbar. Phillips looking to deliver the cross towards Akin Fenwar. Can he find space to turn? He'll just shield it, maybe. And he's found space to turn now. Phillips! Oh, good save! Martin Phillips holds his head, and that could so easily have snatched a point for Torquay United then. Alex Russell with the corner. Oh, Canaville with the header! Well, I'm not sure whether it was Lee Canaville or Martin Phillips. Phillips is pointing to his chest, he's claiming the goal. Either way, Torquay have got the equaliser. Well, good corner in from Alex Russell. Canaville getting up, free header on the near post. And Martin Phillips was on the line to make sure the ball went over. And Torquay look as if they may have salvaged a point from this one. They showed in the last 10, 15 minutes that they put us under a lot of pressure. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of determination there. And they, did, they didn't give in, they didn't lie down. And that's what will keep them alive. We, we, we survived last year, uh, I would say, probably with lesser ability in terms of the squad that I had at Chesterfield. We've got stronger this year. Um, but there's enough spirit out there to let me know that uh, uh, Torquay have got a very good chance of staying up. Yeah, I've got to say thank you very much to Roy for, for saying that. But at the end of the day, the proof's in the pudding at the end of the season. It's uh, where you end up in the league. And uh, uh, I, I, to be honest, I don't think anybody's uh, too good to go down. And so, But the way, the spirit that we've got in the club, um, the way we play, I think a lot of people on our side, they, they, they would be delighted for us to stay up. And uh, I, I certainly believe that we're good enough to stay up and that we, we can achieve that. Now, games are running out, 10 left, but of those 10, you've got some very difficult ones coming up. Well, I've said all season, they're all difficult. And, uh, you know, I think that everybody's looked at this month and, and looked at uh, the teams ahead. We'll take them one at a time. Uh, we're, you know, we're going to Hull on Saturday and it's a place that, uh, you know, we've always been quite successful at. We're not, certainly not frightened of going there and uh, trying to get a result. Torquay's relegation fears are far more acute in League One. The weekend defeat against Hull has left them deep in trouble and desperate for a West Country derby victory against Bristol City at Playmore this Saturday. Our commentator at the KC Stadium, Andy Gilson. Now, this is Phillips. Good run from Phillips. Chance here, perhaps, for Torquay. Ching to cross that is a real chance here. It could go anywhere. Oh, they've missed it. My goodness me. I prefer. Rolls it forward, picked up by Constantine. Knows he's got to make up for a woeful miss, Constantine. Yeah, I can fend up. Good footwork from Phillips. There's a header, there's a chance here. And it's 1 0. No, the flag's up. It won't count. in there again and looks for the return this is Barnby a real chance here oh was that a trip yes it was oh penalty given it's just about screws though the pace just beating Marriott who guessed it right Ashby again with a cross there's a free header, and it's cut out. But the flag goes up, it won't count. Wins a cross here. That's nicely done, Torquay caught out here. That's a penalty, no doubt about that one. Elliot. Looks like it. Elliot then. When those key decisions go against you, it's always going to be hard. And uh, we thought the, the penalty here was at least harsh. And uh, I think if it had been it happened at the other end, it would have been given. So, uh, you know, we, we came away from there greed, but uh, very heartened by our performance. It was always going to be a tough month, this. And I guess, <laughs> you know, on paper, your next game against Bristol City might be, might be seen as the easiest of the, of the four that you, you, you're sort of uh, having to, to come up against. But. I don't think there's any easy ones in this league, but uh, it's certainly one that I think everybody's been looking forward to for a long time. It's our local derby this year, and uh, 
which is great to say that you know we've got a local derby against Bristol City is, is fantastic. Uh, the players are certainly looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know the supporters are, and uh, it's going to be a great, a great atmosphere. It's going to be, I think, our biggest crowd of the season. And uh, uh, I suppose uh, uh, Bristol City are still fighting for a playoff position. Uh, we're, we're fighting to get out of that relegation zone. So there's all to play for. Now, Easter is traditionally the time when the promotion and relegation picture becomes that little bit clearer. But if Torquay United are going to improve their survival prospects, they're going to have to do it the hard way. They face a trip to promotion chasing Sheffield Wednesday on Saturday, followed by a home game against leaders Luton on Monday. All that after being thumped 4-0 by Bristol City in the Playmore gloom last Saturday. Martin Dean describes the action. Joe Keith, Leroy Lita. And Scott Brown all poised over the ball. It's going to be Leroy Lita to strike it, and a good save from Kevin Marriott. Uh, Lita, 23 goals already this season. Struck that with a bit of venom. Quickly taken in towards Canneville. Now Martin Phillips looking to get the cross in towards Akin Fenwa. Uh, Steve Phillips making a good save. Keith. Back for Scott Goldwarn. It's beaten in the air by Brooker. This is Leroy Lita going for the long range effort. Oh, what a goal from Leroy Lita! Well, he's got the gold boots and he's got the golden touch. That must have been all of 30 yards. And it flew into the top corner. He's been with the corner. Marriott not getting there, and it's been headed in. Leroy Lita has got another. And he's absolutely delighted. Well, two in two minutes for Leroy Lita. He's not the biggest by any means, but he got up well and unchallenged for that header. He just planted it past Andy Marriott. And Torquay in some disarray. Benoit got the flick on, might fall for Leon Constantine here, he's gone for the shot and Phillips lucky to just really get it away for the corner, he didn't get as good a hand on that as he wanted to, Steve Phillips. I think he was a little relieved to see it drift away from the goal. Goldborn then with the throw. Lita getting the return ball from Joe Keith, this is Leroy Lita going for the hat-trick, he's got it! That must be one of the quickest of the season. We've only been playing 20 minutes. And it's Leroy Lita, three, Torquay United nil. This is Phillips. In for Akin Fenwa. Now Constantine. Space for him to perhaps get a shot in. Or might come for Joku 4. This is Joku 4. Good save from Phillips and eventually Clayton Fortune. Getting the ball away. Oh, Talking maybe 3 0 down, but they're not out of it yet. Joe Keith. One for Heffernan to chase. Oh, he's got away from Woods just a little bit. This is Heffernan. Oh, and that's four. Well, it looked on the cards from the moment he received the ball. Paul Heffernan just stole a yard on Steve Woods. Created a bit of space for himself, and the finish was absolutely emphatic. And City now surely heading for a welcome three points. More than anything, it's a mental battle. You saw that on uh, against Bristol City. It was a, men mentally we we went uh, as soon as that first goal went in. Everybody found it so difficult. And even though we, if we go a goal down in the game, you've got to be mentally tough and you've got to mentally say, yeah, I've got to pick yourself up. Because I still believe that we're going to stay in this division. Maybe not a lot, not a lot. Other people do, but I certainly do. And I know, I know what it will take. And it's going to take a tremendous amount of hard work, a tremendous a lot of. Uh, you've got to put yourself on the line, put your bodies on the line, um, and, and want it more than anybody else. And uh, that's what we need, and that's what we're going to try and achieve. It couldn't really be much of a worse game, though, could it? Going to Hillsborough on Saturday, and then on Monday you've got Luton at home. I couldn't think of a better game, to be honest. Away from home, in a big crowd. Um, you, the motivation issue won't. Be, I don't think will be an issue. The lads will be highly motivated. I couldn't think of a better game, and uh, I think from from my point of view, 
uh, whether we win, lose or draw, I think the performance is so important because we need to take a good performance forward to us into the looting game and then forward again into the last six games of the season. A young football fan has been shown the red card after throwing a paper dart onto the pitch. 12-year-old Connor Hewings now faces a three-year ban from Torquay United's Playmore ground. Young Gulls fan Connor Hewings admits his excitement got the better of him when he threw the paper aeroplane from the stand during last Saturday's match against Bristol. But he feels a three-year ban is over the top. I was standing watching the game yeah, and I made a paper aeroplane out of cardboard that they were giving out. And I threw it onto the pitch and, and then the security guards come and took me away and took me into this little place. I had to chat with me and that because I didn't really know that it was, not, it was bad to throw paper aeroplanes. Connor was told he'd been caught on CCTV, throwing a missile onto the pitch. The police then informed him that he was banned for three years and marched him, he says, to his grannies. He's only a 12-year-old boy and getting pulled out by the police and the stewards, he was crying, hysterical, and then getting brought home in a police car. The youngster claims he was copying adults at the game and is devastated by the ban. Club chairman Mike Bateson says the law is quite clear. It's illegal to throw anything onto the pitch. He'll decide over the weekend whether the ban will stay. Meanwhile, Connor's considering writing to the club to apologise for his actions in the hope he won't be left on the sidelines much longer. Guy Panel for West Country News. With the spectre of relegation haunting their every move, Torquay United could hardly have faced a tougher 52 hours in their entire season, with games against two of the top four sides in League One. But there should be no shortage of belief among the players for tomorrow afternoon's clash with second-place Luton at Plainmore. That after a stirring performance in a two-all draw at Sheffield Wednesday. They stunned a Hillsborough crowd of more than 21,000 by going two up through Bioac in Fenwer and Steve Woods. With 41 minutes still to play, though, it was perhaps a little too much to expect that one of the division's most prolific goal-scoring sides wouldn't breach one of the leakiest defences. Wednesday finally woke up, no doubt thanks to a few choice words from manager Paul Sturrock, to reinforce their promotion credentials by striking twice in the space of seven minutes. Goals from Lee Bullen and Graham Barrett save the Owls' embarrassment, and while a single point leaves Torquay still three adrift of safety at the bottom of the table, They've again proved they have the quality needed to compete at this level. But first to the action, and a game that could signal the beginning of the end for Torquay United's survival hopes. This is Woodman. That for Aaron Brown. Chance for him to get the cross in towards Akin Fenwa. Better was coming in behind him, and Beresford made the save, and it's been turned in. Bioak in Fenoir has got the final touch and Torquay have the lead. Now Marlon Beresford is complaining that the ball was taken from his hands. And referee would have none of it. And Bioak in Fenoir gets his 13th goal of the season. You won't get a much simpler one than that. Underwood then with the corner. A lot of bodies in there. Steve Howard has got the touch and it's been turned in, I think, by Kevin Nichols. As the corner came across, Steve Howard got the header downwards and it was Kevin Nichols poaching on the goal line who turned it into the roof of the net. Oh, that's a good ball for Kevin Foley. He's got three men in the middle if he can provide the right sort of cross. Oh, good goal! Well, it was beautifully worked and beautifully finished. Kevin Foley getting away on the right, a lovely deep cross to the far post. And there was Peter Holmes to head the ball past Andy Marriott. Howard is in the box, fine on the far side. Nichols, now Underwood, looking to drive in the cross and almost catching Andy Marriott out. Steve Howard, 3-1. Well, Andy Marriott will have to shoulder some of the blame, he was really caught out by that uh, cross-come shot from Underwood, just palming it away, and then Steve Howard, ever the predator, forcing the ball over the line, his 20th goal of the season. They need a goal, and quickly to get themselves back in it, Canneville. Away by Nichols, straight to Martin Phillips now. He's the man capable of 
turning situations now. Handball surely against Paul Underwood. And that is a penalty. And Phillips with the cross in. Underwood stuck the arm out. And Bioak in Fenwar with a chance to put Torquay back in it. Oh, good save from Beresford. Touched it against the post. And Torquay are denied the opportunity to get back into this match. Berkovic. In the middle towards Steve Howard. It'll come for Rowan Vine, and that's four. We went to Sheffield Wednesday and we played some good football, but we also competed for, for 90 minutes. At the end, people were throwing their bodies in the way and, and uh, wanting to get hurt, and you come away with a result. Uh, that didn't happen today. I'm looking around our dressing room today, and there's no one with a, with a cut above their eye, or no one's really hurt, or nobody's really uh, throwing their bodies on the line. And we've got six games to go, and that's what we've got to do. And uh, uh, it's as simple as that. And I've been trying to drum it into them uh, for week, week on week. And the message hasn't got through that at 60 minutes and now isn't enough. When things aren't going for you, that's when, that's when you find out what people are about. And uh, within games, when things are going for us, we're fine. Uh, when things start to go against us, we go under. And uh, that's good. That can't happen. As you say, six games to go. I mean, it looks as if you're possibly going to have to win perhaps four of them. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a big ask now. Yeah, it's it? simple as that. We're going to have to win four. It's a big ask. It's been a big ask all season. Um, if I felt that we weren't capable of it, I'd, I'd throw the towel in now. But as you saw today, for uh, an hour, 70 minutes, we're, we're right in the game, they, and they're the best side in this league. Um, against Sheffield Wednesday, you know, we're, we're right in the game. And so I know we can do it. The, the players have got to believe that. Um, and uh, I've just got to get through them. If it means I've got to get a few of them by the scruff of the neck and get them up against the wall and have a fight in the dressing room with them one by one, then that's what I'll do. Uh, and I've told them that. Um, if they, you know, and then we'll see who comes outstanding because that's what we're in. You know, we've got to say, right, we'll go into a darkened room, have a good old scrap, and see who comes outstanding. And you, we're hoping that Torquay come outstanding there. And uh, and in no uncertain terms, I've made them aware of that and and what I expect for the last six games of the season. Yeah, strong words there from uh, Leroy Rosenia. Watching those are three football correspondents. Chris Harrington, who watches Plymouth Argyle, Stuart James, Yeovil and Exeter City. And uh, Dave Thomas, first of all, talkie watcher for many years. And uh, we've just heard Leroy there. I'm sure he said the same thing to you after the game. But it's frustrating for the fans, Dave, isn't it? Because that uh, defeat against Luton, bad as it was, came after that encouraging performance at Sheffield Wednesday. Yes, I... <laughs> They won so many friends at Sheffield Wednesday, just yeah. as they have done on the road all season. Um, you know, I had people coming up to me and saying, well, you're not going down, definitely. And I turned to them and said, yeah, we might, because they can't reproduce it from one game to the next. That's been the problem, hasn't it? Because individually, Torquay seem to have got some good players in the squad, good enough for League One, really. Well, I think one of the problems, you know, we've, we've, we've talked about this here, and I, obviously we talk, we've, we've chatted about it through the season, is that so many people have kept saying to Torquay, look, you're a good side. Other managers keep saying, Leroy's referred to it, managers saying, oh, what a good side, how they've, you know, et cetera, et cetera, after they've taken points off us. Mm. And, you know, in the position that Torquay are in, and we're probably always going to be in from uh, this season, i.e. the bottom half of the table, yeah. you know, that's not... That's not what's going, to keep, what's going to keep you up. No, and you don't get relegated by losing to sides like Luton, top of the league. It's no. those stupid points that have been thrown away this season, particularly at Playmore. Particularly at Playmore. Their away record stands up against anybody in the bottom half of the table and even some higher than that. But at home, they've lost ten matches at home. And in several, many, many of those games, they've been in front at home. Yeah. So it is key now that these two games coming up, the, ne the next games against Warsaw, against MK Dons, to have any chance of staying up, Talk, you've got to win both those, haven't well, you? Well, I think they've got to take at least four points from the next two matches. Their last two games are home to Blackpool and away to Colchester, both of whom will be out of trouble by then. And I think both of those games are winnable. And we all know that Torquay are the great escape artists. And if, if it comes to the last day of the season, I'll have my mortgage on them doing it because you know what they're like. But they must not, they must take points in these next two games. And obviously, MK Dons is, 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 is at least as important as Walsall on Saturday. If they okay. beat Walsall on Saturday, they're back in business. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed. They, they will. Dave, about Talk United, you know, let's be honest, we don't like saying it, but surely they're on their way down, aren't they? The maths say yes, they are going down, uh, but they've got the games to stay up, and you know what Talkie are like when everybody's written them off. We've seen it before, the Houdini Act.
Good evening and welcome to Soccer Night from Torquay United's Boots and Laces Club. No tanks of water, straight jackets or handcuffs tonight, but there has been plenty of talk of Harry Houdini in these parts. But even the legendary escapologist may not fancy being in Torquay's position at the moment. Well, a look at the bottom of League One shows just how precarious it is. With just five games to go, they're six points adrift of safety. With Stockport and probably Peterborough already doomed, it now looks as if it'll be a four-way battle for the remaining two relegation spots. But how will things pan out between now and the end of the season? Well, Walsall face a tough run-in with trips to Swindon, Peterborough and Hartlepool, as well as second-placed Hull at home. They're also a team in decline, and our soccer night prediction could see them pick up just four more points. Well, the MK Dons are certainly the form team at the moment, but they also have the most difficult run-in of all the relegation battlers. We're predicting just five points from their five games. Well, it's all or nothing, of course, for Torquay. They do, though, have a relatively easy run-in, with four of their five opponents seemingly having little left to play for. It's a tall order, but they could pick up ten points. Wrexham have six games left, and they have some tough fixtures against the likes of Bristol City, Brentford and Luton. We're predicting seven points. Now, if all that were to happen, that would leave the final table looking something like this. As you can see, it's very tight and goal difference might yet decide who stays up and who goes down. Well, talking manager Leroy Rosenia and chairman Mike Bateson are with us tonight. Leroy, first of all, clearly our predictions there are a little bit hypothetical, but you really are staring down the barrel, aren't you? We are, and what we need to do is go and win the game on Saturday, and that will give us uh, a, a massive chance. It will give everybody a massive lift. The table will look a lot better, and uh, so you know everything's being put into this game on Saturday because that's the most important one. Last time you were with us on the programme, you were confident of staying up. Are you still just as confident? Well, after the Luton game, I'd say no, I wasn't. I don't think anybody was after getting beat 4-1 at home. But um, after going to Walsall and performing in the way we did, I think everybody's, that gave everybody a big lift. We should have got the three points, but we didn't. If we perform like that in our next five games, we've got every chance. Yeah, but all managers in this position say they're confident. Are you really, honestly...? I don't think all managers would. I, I, right. I heard Barry Fry a couple of weeks ago throw the towel in and say that they weren't good enough, the fans know they're not good enough, and he knows they're not good enough. I certainly don't think that. I think we are capable of doing it. And I think we've got a chance of doing it if we win the game on Saturday. Yeah, and Mike, we've all been here before with, with Torquay, haven't we? Time, and yeah. you seem very relaxed about it all. No point being otherwise, is it? Yeah, what about the financial implications of, uh, of possibly dropping down? Not, not frightening, not too dramatic. Uh, I, I mean, I said early in the season, well, halfway through the season, uh, where was the reward for being promoted because our crowds didn't go up? Well, equally, if we are relegated, which I don't think we will be, but... Uh, um, I don't think we'll suffer financially. In fact, I know we will. OK, we'll talk more to Mike and to uh, Leroy later on. But despite their lowly position, the MK Dons are actually one of the form teams in Coca-Cola League One. They extended their unbeaten run to 11 games with a one-all draw at home to Oldham last Saturday, a result which eased the pressure on them. And according to manager Danny Wilson, put the ball back in Torquay's court. You know, next week is, a, is a, a, a terrific match for us next week down at Torquay. Well, there'll be an immense pressure on Torquay. You know, um, you know, they have to win the game, quite honestly. You know, and we can go there, we can relax. The onus will be on them and the pressure will be on them, that's for sure. And, uh, and we've seen it in recent weeks, what we can be like away from home. So we're looking forward to the challenge. Well, Danny Wilson certainly got his side uh, on form at just about the right time. So is the pressure on you now, do you think? I think the pressure is on us to get the result on Saturday. But if we get the result on Saturday, I think the pressure will be back on Danny. And uh, I think he knows that as well. I know Danny very well, so uh, he's not stupid. And uh, he knows that if we get the three points on Saturday, we'll be just three points behind. And it's just as easy to go on the losing run as well. If you do lose on Saturday, is that it, effectively?